Hello again StrokeFlop, today I'm bringing you another build video for Torchlight 3's early access and this one is for the sharpshooter combined with the electrode. I simply called it electrified sharpshooter electrode build. Uh, if you want to skip to certain parts of the video uh, you can use the timestamps in the description below. And keep in mind that this build, I kind of uh, did a different approach to it. I decided to test uh, using targeted strikes and then afterwards to test using tight grouping as the main damage dealing skill. So I'm going to show you some footage in a moment with tight grouping and at the end of the video I would also show uh, footage with both targeted strikes and tight grouping. Another option would be to use uh, instead of either of those two skills um, explosive arrow. So it's flexible, you can use either of those. Uh, I'd like to call builds like this one proc monster builds because uh, it's all about the procs. It's all about uh, um, getting as many hits per second which results as many procs per second that you can and I found the, the synergy for this build in the weirdest of places. Uh, for the electrode, who would believe that uh, I would uh, go for um, the infectious shooter uh, together with scout's bones? Well, it's a great synergy, infectious shooter with scout's bones um, shoots a lot of missiles, all of those missiles can proc things like thunderstrike, like uh, the white vaults, cave breaker, then there's uh, also shocking display when enemies die and then there are shock bolts when we hit shocked enemies and so on. Uh, by the way, this footage on, on this map uh, that you see is uh, tight grouping. The previous footage was uh, targeted strikes. You're probably seeing this, that there's a synergy between um, the 1000 volt burst, that when I activate 1000 volt burst, um, that 50% casting speed makes tight grouping go quicker and attack quicker on auto attacks or when you're spamming it and the same goes for targeted strikes. You can spam targeted strikes quicker. This is why the synergy with revolt is great, uh, especially once they fix it to actually reset the cooldown of scout's bones. Let's start with showing you the skills first. Here we are at the segment where I talk about the skills uh, I used uh, for this build. I would like to mention that targeted strikes might be level 8, um, but uh, you don't have to use targeted strikes. Here you could use one of the three choices, targeted strikes, explosive arrow or tight grouping. And after I'm done recording this segment and the gear segment, I will record some more gameplay where I would be playing with tight grouping just to demonstrate how um, that could feel. I've got uh, respectacles, so that should uh, help me do it. I've got six and I can get two more from other heroes, but uh, this uh, gameplay footage I would include uh, at the end of the video um, where we could talk about uh, what I've noticed as a difference. So, before we go on, keep in mind I'm using the plus two precision skill levels from the Musketeer Cavalier hat and uh, in the Legendarium I'm using the Musketeer Rope. So whenever you see a skill uh, that is Precision or Adventurer that's level 8, it's actually level 10. And if it's level 4, it's actually level 6. And if it's level 1, it's actually level 3 for those uh, tier 1, 2, 3 bonuses. So I strongly suggest uh, getting uh, extra charge on reward. Whether you're using targeted strikes or tight grouping or explosive arrow, I think that extra charge on reward would be great first for the mobility. It uh, refills the ghost visage charges. Second for the damage, um, because when it gets fixed, right now it's not working properly, so I'm going to use uh, Scout's Bones. And I'm going to use uh, Revolt, and you see first it consumed two charges instead of just one second, Scout's Bones didn't get reset. And the same thing happens with uh, other skills. Um, I've tested, so right now it's not working completely the way it should, but uh, when it gets fixed it will be nice. Um, see, it doesn't reset the cooldown of Freeze's Fate or Scout's Bones. Uh, so keep that in mind, when this gets fixed, this extra reward charge would mean that you can use Scout's Bones, then reward, then use another Scout's Bones, then reward again, then use third Scout's Bones. And this by itself is a what? A what of... Um, proking uh, goodness because every single uh, poison bolt can proc uh, other things like whitening uh, turn the strikes and stuff like this 
Okay, so now that we've got this out of the way, uh, that now that I've told you get reward uh, not just for the tier 2 bonus uh, for precision skills damage but for the reward charge, I strongly suggest using scout's bones. Uh, that's the weirdest uh, unexpected synergy that I found while leveling up this build. At first I started alright, let's make a hard seeker build with the hard shocker and um, and that other uh, and in the, the two-tone pool so I wanted to combine this one and this one but it didn't seem good and uh, I ended up respecking and removing the eight points I spent into Heartseeker and putting those points into Scouts Bones and did I notice a DPS jump my DPS skyrocketed uh, by removing the eight points from Heartseeker and putting them into Scouts Bones um, and yeah, it was it was a great experience and I decided to also invest into Rizzi's Fate. Four points only, I don't need the summon. Four points extra just to get that summon doesn't seem worth it for this build. But this damage to bind that slow to stunt and being able to slow enemies is fine. This is completely optional and instead of Rizzi's Fate you can put the points into Curse of PP if you want. Or you can just uh, max out Gooks if you want or you can put uh, the points into energizer and keep in mind I'm level 68 out of uh, no, I'm level 58 out of 60 and I've got 68 out of 70 points the next two points uh, you can spend wherever you want I would prefer to put them into energizer um, but that's completely optional I mean uh, if you want you can put them into ghost visage if you want you can put them into Rizzi, into goose into shasta uh, my suggestion would be to to just put those points into energizer uh, it would be the best uh, thing you can do for the build now that I've talked about those skills um, Royal Shasta I strongly suggest while leveling up to get Royal Shasta as soon as you can and to get the tier 2 bonus to increase the damage to taunted enemies as soon as possible one point into Ghost Visage is more than enough uh, while leveling probably one point into Goose is more than enough and, but eventually get that cooldown reduction so you can um, chop off uh, 0 0.6 seconds from the 6 second cooldown of Scout's Bones and uh, reduce the, the Shasta cooldown by 3 seconds and reduce Revolt's cooldown as well. Um, and uh, now let's move on to the Relic, to the Electrode skill allocation. I think maxing out Vocalize Storm should be the first priority for you. And um, by the time you unwalk elect uh, by the time you reach uh, enough levels to unwalk Whitening Strike, you should also start putting points into Whitening Strike. Um, don't prioritize it that much, but uh, this is a main m one of the main sources of damage for the build, one of the main sources of procs. Uh, 1000 volt burst you really want at least one point, point while leveling up and eventually when you have more time uh, get that extra 100% 1000 volt burst duration to get it to last uh, instead of 5-10 seconds it's great, it's definitely great, this gives you casting speed and I'm gonna demonstrate now uh, in a moment um, what this casting speed can do for us, actually I may not be able to demonstrate it because I don't have the energy but this casting speed makes us um, cast targeted strikes faster and it makes us cast uh, other things like tight grouping faster so it's definitely great uh, for the damage to have 1000 volt burst and to have that increased duration um, on the other side of the electrode we've got uh, tingling sensation and shocking display I would prioritize Tingling Sensation and uh, then eventually when you're level 52 you can start putting the next 5 points until level 57 or maybe when you're 53 until level 58 you can put the next 5 points into Shocking Display from 53 to 58 including and then at 59 and 60 I would go for Energizer. Um, so this is very good as one point early in the game, leveling up the build, even if you decide to go for tight grouping or explosive arrow, going for one point into targeted strikes is pretty nice to level up. Uh, and going for uh, for tier 2 revolt is ok while leveling up, but eventually get the second charge, eventually max out targeted strikes or tight grouping or explosive arrow, 
um, but I think this should be one of your major priorities early in the game. In the mid game, Lightning Strike um, and uh, Royal Shasta. Uh, and of course, maxing out Scout's Bone so is amazing once you get the Infectious Shooter, but more about this in a moment. And I think that pretty much sums up the skills. Now let's let's talk about the Legendarium. Infectious Shooter, White Wolves, Cave Breaker, Musketeer, Rope. Those three items uh, are my my must-have um, best in uh, the Legendarium Swords items. Uh, I like using the Musketeer Rope here instead of wearing it because you cannot get flat damage like this 791 flat damage on a, on a Legendary chest. Meaning uh, you want blue here and you want blue here because again legendary legs will not give you that. More about gear in the next segment. Let's continue on with the legendarium. If you don't have the cave breaker or the infectious shooter, something that will be worth uh, mentioning is the chronometer. It's not bad, it's worth it. Lil Drake, it's not bad, it's okay as a temporary one. Another thing that you might want to consider would be some of the other musketeer items that you could wear. For example, if you don't have a good uh, blue flat damage uh, uh, armor, chest armor, you can use the rope. You can use the rope, open up a sword for now. Um, Shasta's Promise is also another thing you might want to consider temporary. Um, and um, there's things like the arc powered shoulders that you can get dark powered boots uh, if you have a shield equipped uh, that you can get uh, so there there are certain things that you can use um, but uh, the three things that you're seeing here are my preferred setup the infectious shooter to give us the poison projectiles that shoot out of scout bones um, the musketeer rope to get that extra plus two adventure skill levels and uh, the wide world cave breaker to stack more procs more procs uh, falling from the sky that can proc other procs and we get a proxception in a way and I think uh, that's it for the skills the legendarium now quickly about the pet skills my prefer ideal combo or most on most builds is deadlier strikes battle cry and healing friendship and depending on the build I use either screeching stun or immobilizing strike or necro pupper but necro pupper is broken so even on summoner builds I don't use it yet. I would suggest uh, Screeching Stun is good for builds where you need stunning, but for builds where you want to keep the enemies away from you, Immobilizing Strike seems like a better thing, because this is for 2 seconds, this is for 1 second. This is uh, once every 30 seconds, this is 25% uh, chance, so this can proc more often uh, when the pet is attacking. So. And that's it for the skills, next I'm gonna show you the gear segment. And here we are at the gear segment. So there are very different ways how you could play it. You could play it as a one-handed uh, focus. Uh, and there's uh, another option, one-handed shield, and another option, two-handed. Uh, but in any case, um, you would want to get um, a socket on the weapon and uh, maybe on the offhand as well. I don't have the best ones to show you, but uh, this is an interesting uh, weapon that I was using for most of the footage recorded uh, throughout this video that you would be seeing. Uh, and you want flat damage, crit chance at the top for a two-hander. At the bottom you want uh, at least two more flat damages, and then more crit chance is not bad. Um, crit damage is also great, um, and then uh, in the socket you want flat damage. Uh, things like chance to shock. Additional uh, bolts fired on shock are not a bad option, for example instead of the extra 4.9 crit chance I could get maybe more shock bolts. Um, the pet gives me 15% crit chance and the cap of crit chance is 40 and with gear you can probably easily reach that cap uh, with a two-handed weapon like this one. You can see right now I'm only at uh, 34 so just six more which uh, for example I can get work and get uh, crit chance on my helmet and I've got 5.8 here and I can get crit chance on the legs you can get crit damage on the boots uh, and so on uh, I'm gonna explain more about stats in a moment now about the one-handed weapon um, this is the best one I've got on this account across all heroes it's a green one with fat damage in the top fat damage in the bottom and uh, 
flat damage as a socket. If you're very lucky you can get a blue weapon with flat damage at the top, two more flat damages in the middle, uh, different ones you can get the same ones and at the bottom you can just add another flat damage. You no longer need to synergize the same flat damage type as the relic. So I don't need to be using uh, electric for this build, any any flat damage would do. Because um, with uh, this upcoming patch that's coming on the 9th of September, which is tomorrow um, for me when recording this video, uh, we would no longer get uh, the 25% uh, elemental damage bonus from the passives each relic has. Uh, it's replaced by other things such as for example procs or damage for procs and things like that. So with the weapon, um, being covered now you can get a shield with um, a good high level shield level 60 shield with a lot of defense at the top block chance at the top then at the bottom maybe more defense maybe more block chance things like chance to knock back are not bad for this build because knocking back the enemies would mean uh, they might end up getting hit uh, one more time or two more times depending on how many times they get knocked back by the scouts bones the Scouts Bones projectile is such, it's traveling in such a way that it's its traveling uh, slowly and it's shooting projectiles. And as it's shooting those projectiles uh, from, from the big one, um, you could end up uh, knocking back the enemy and hitting it with more of those projectiles as a result of the knockback. So maybe around 30-35% knockback is probably what I would suggest. I wouldn't suggest going too much with the knockback. Uh, even 20%, even 15% is not a bad thing to have. Things like HP or Elemental Defense are also nice uh, um, and uh, more box chains are also nice uh, on the shield. If you decide to use um, an offhand you can go for something that gives you precision skills damage or fat damage like this one 439 or maybe additional bolts fired on shock or chance to shock. Um, there are many ways to do it. If you're lucky you're gonna get additional bolts fired on shock together with flat damage and I think that would work very well he here for this build. Now for the chest and legs I mentioned in the previous segment that you want blue items. Blue items can give you flat damage and if you're lucky you can get flat damage together with the same element percent damage and then try and synergize for example let's say this weapon is ice and then more ice and then I've socketed it for ice then if this one was ice uh, flat and ice percent and this one was ice flat and together with ice percent it would have been a great synergy and then I could have equipped the ice boots um, maybe something with percent ice damage on the boots and percent crit damage on the boots would have been perfect right now if I equip this it's not doing much for me you can see my attack from 8087 goes to 8701 ice but the total attack DPS uh, which counts crit chance and crit damage um, falls down so it's probably better to to, to not uh, use the percent ice unless you're stacking it on every possible place and unless you have more percentages so for now um, for the legendary things I would suggest wearing the hat with crit chance maybe another skill point there instead of the gear work or the health regen you can get another skill point level to uh, keep in mind, this is very important, if you get a skill level point, make sure it's to a skill that you've invested more than one point into. So in my case, Revolt, Targeted Strikes, Walkerwise Storm, uh, Thousand Volt Burst, um, Scouts Bones, uh, Rizzi, Goose or Shasta. If it gives me one point to Ghost Visage, it's not gonna work because um, I can't remove that one point that I spent and still get it. So if you've only got one point into one skill, um, it's not going to do much for you to get uh, one point of that skill from the hat. But if you do get that one point, that means uh, you would end up getting three levels of Energizer instead of two uh, at the end version of the build. Which is pretty nice, uh, getting that extra 5% uh, there. So I would suggest using maybe the shoulders and boots or the shoulders and gauntlets or the boots and gauntlets together with the hat. Uh, it's optional which one of those three you would use. Ideally I would be using uh, arc powered shoulders uh, for the for the procs, for the charged up and then I would be wearing uh, cavalier hat, uh, um, Herman's uh, musketeer, uh, musketeer gloves and then the musketeer boots. 
Um, this is what I would like. I didn't have better gloves with additional bolt fired on shock, so I decided it's gonna be better if I use the additional bolt fired on shock uh, arc powered gloves instead of the ones uh, that are musketeer and don't have it uh, and putting the arc powered shoulders. So my perfect setup would be arc powered shoulders here with crit damage, boots here, musketeer with crit damage um, and here uh, musketeer gloves with um, maybe crit chance against shocked, uh, maybe block chance, some evasion maybe depending but uh, I would really want additional bolts fired on shock on those, on those um, musketeer gauntlets and here the hat with the crit chance and uh, one skill level to, to a specific skill. Now that we've sorted what we want in the gear, um, keep in mind that you can uh, use a chronometer as an offhand. A very good base would be a chronometer. Chronometer with um, with fat damage you probably won't be able to get, but you can get a chronometer with relic energy generation minus relic energy cost uh, or uh, shock bolts fired on shock things like those. It's gonna be pretty nice. Um, another thing. I I mentioned Shasta's Promise is not a bad option uh, for a shoot if you decide to go one-handed. And uh, for two-handed definitely go uh, for the weapon blue and for the um, one-handed weapon also blue. For the pet I would suggest Drat's neck band. And uh, for the rows on the pet items I would suggest pet attack skills active uh, cooldown reduction. So faster cooldown for pet's active skills. And attack speed for the pet would be pretty nice. Another thing, uh, pet causes shock uh, for X seconds, zaps other enemies is pretty nice as well. And for the um, for the types, I said Drat's neck band is my favorite here. For the other swats, you would either want token of rapid bartering or the phoenix one. Um, or let me show you the other one, the invigoration. Um, so Invigoration is great, Invigoration is great, uh, where is it, it's um, it's here, so Invigoration, Rapid Bartering or Phoenix, uh, use two of those, if the pet dies a lot use the Phoenix, if the pet doesn't die, uh, use Invigoration and Bartering, if you don't need the, the farming uh, aspect of Bartering then just use Invigoration and maybe something else like um, one of the Novas for example could work very well. The, the the clockwork uh, the clockwork token or the inferno token i think it would be nice uh, to make it uh, inferno or clockwork uh, actually for this build because it's gonna result in more procs for us and that pretty much sums up the gear um i probably missed some stuff actually yeah i missed uh, talking about good stats uh, just quickly gonna list some i'm probably missing some of them but adventurous uh, precision skill levels damage uh, you would probably want that Adventure skill level damage, um, um, adventure skill damage is probably not that important, so I wouldn't um, rely too much on it. Damage to targeted strikes, damage to explosive arrow if you're using explosive arrow, damage to tight grouping if you're using tight grouping, uh, will be nice. Um, energy uh, cost reduction, energy recharge rate. Crit chance caps at 40, keep that in mind, but it's good to have it. Crit damage caps at 300, keep that in mind, it's good to have it. Gearwork caps at 100, but some maps give you 25 or 50%, so keep that in mind as well. Um, defenses uh, are great as well. HP is decent. Avoid health regen, I'm not a big fan of the health regen per second. Avoid basic attack things. Uh, avoid crit chance versus... Uh, uh, effects that you don't cause, like the bleeding here, which we don't cause, neither me or the pet. So avoid that one. And uh, definitely go for flat damages and if you can get percent damages as well. And that pretty much sums it up. Now let's show you some more gameplay footage, including me playing the tight grouping version. And here we are at the gameplay segment where I show you how I play the skill and just uh, provide you with some more footage. And this time I decided to make this a little bit longer than usual because, well, um, I wanted to show you sufficient amount of footage of me playing uh, either of the two skills. Uh, I didn't include footage with playing uh, Explosive Arrow just because I didn't have enough respectacles to yet again respect into an Explosive Arrow. 
So first you're gonna see a little bit of footage uh, like uh, what you're seeing right now of targeted strikes in action and then um, at the end of this segment, the second half of this segment would be tight grouping. Um, both skills are nice. Uh, I mean, I still think that maybe targeted strikes is uh, still the, the better out of the two skills. First of all, it's piercing straight line. So you can hit so many enemies if you position yourself uh, the right way. But um, again, this is not going to be the major damage dealer of the of the build. The major damage dealer would be all the procs uh, that we get. Of course, it really helps having uh, a strong precision skill base to spam. And targeted strikes is just perfect for... Uh, not just while leveling up, just in general to use it. I strongly suggest if you level up to use targeted strikes and then maybe later switch to tight grouping uh, afterwards. But yeah, you can see the build is uh, not that hard to play. Uh, especially if you use tight grouping, you don't even have to have a, a Rizzi on your skill bar, but more about that in a moment. So just uh, position yourself the right way, uh, get Shasta up, um, use Goose, use... Um, use the, the Rizzi's Fate skill to slow the enemies to benefit from its passive tier 2 10% damage versus slow stunt uh, or blinded and then start shooting stuff uh, use uh, scouts bones, use targeted strikes when needed reload and make sure to be using Walker White Storm as uh, much as possible and make sure to use 1000 volt burst uh, on uh, champion fights or boss fights um, when it's ready don't waste that energy, don't let it stay there unused um, and don't uh, let 1000 volt burst stay there unused unless uh, there's no enemies worthy of its damage. Um, the damage is nice uh, in either of the two uh, setups and uh, on this setup pay attention once I activate 1000 volt burst in a moment how quickly the auto attacks and the tight grouping attacks uh, start happening, uh, how quickly I can spam it. With tight grouping, there's one synergy I can hint at, uh, which didn't, which I didn't talk about in the skill segment, and this is, if you're using uh, tight grouping, you slow the enemies with its tier one bonus, so you don't need to use Rizzi's fate uh, in your skill bar, which means you can leave it at level four and maybe try and remove one point from energize, uh, and maybe put that one point into into the lightning barrier and use the lightning barrier on your skill bar uh, for a little bit of extra block chance if you whack it uh, from your items especially if you use a shield um, uh, that might be a nice synergy so you can max out that and then focus on evasion from gear if you want survivability you probably saw now how quickly it was attacking uh, uh, in the f uh, last few seconds while I was um, under 1000 volt burst effect. I, I think it's still under the effect, we've got two more seconds, you see how quickly it's attacking um, with tight grouping. Very interesting synergy, if you want to experiment feel free to get um, tier 3 um, tier 3 conjure electrode instead of uh, some of the other things, maybe reduce some of the stuff, maybe remove, remove um, Rizzi, maybe uh, remove energize and uh, find out some other place to get that and experiment it might be interesting to consider um, stacking the 50% from 1000 volt burst and the 25% casting speed from tier 3 conjure electrode um, that's uh, another setup that I did not include uh, and I did not talk about until now but yeah there's, there's ways to play it and I just love how this build turned out I did not expect to be playing uh, Scout's Bones with this at first when I leveled up the skill and the build uh, when I was leveling I was thinking okay maybe Heart uh, Shocker with the Chain Lightning and maybe with the 2 tom pull to auto proc uh, Heart Seeker but this is kind of what I ended up using in the end. So this pretty much sums up the build. If you'd like to get notified when I upload more content you can subscribe to my channel and hit that bell button to not miss the content update notifications. The content you would expect to see on my channel is builds and guides and uh, info news uh, videos as well as other type of content for wooters uh, of all sorts, uh, RPGs, uh, ARPGs, uh, tactical RPGs, shooter wooters and other things in between. Thanks for watching, keep it cool, struck up, and until next time.